Hello, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Christine. I like to read a lot of dark and disturbing things and today I have a June reading wrap-up video for you. So let's see what I read. <laughs> I read nine books in the month of June and sorry my dog keeps going in and out um I read nine months in the I read nine months I read nine books in the month of June and I think it overall it was a pretty good reading month I think most of my books are rated four stars so um I don't I didn't have any five stars but um it was still a solid reading month the first set of books I read, I did as part of a reading vlog that I did where I was reading books that were based off of uh, recommendations for my astrological sign, which is Scorpio. And I will link that vlog down below. But um, because I talked to, about those books uh, quite a bit, I won't be discussing them too much. I'll just do a quick little review and tell you what I rated them. So the first book I read was They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. This is a book about a college professor who sees that there is a lot of like sexual abuse that goes on or goes on in the campus and um, a lot of times these men are not being held accountable for their actions and she doesn't like the way that she sees that the women are treated when they do actually have enough bravery to come forward so she kind of takes matter into her own hands and she is a serial killer so I think that it was a pretty pretty entertaining read. I gave this four out of five stars. Um, I do like a lot of revenge kills. The next one I read was The Woman in the Library by Sulari Gentil. This one I had gotten in a book box a long time ago and it sounded kind of spooky and it involved a library. <laughs> um, so I was excited to get to this one finally. This is about um, four people who happen to be sitting in a library, like at the same table, like right next to each other, uh, doing their own thing. They don't know each other when they hear a scream, which is someone who is being murdered in another part of the library. And so these four become fast friends and eventually trying to figure out what happened to that woman um, who was the killer. It's more of a thriller, but kind of like not a fast paced thriller, kind of like a cozy, spooky thriller. I guess. Um, I ended up giving this, I think, 3.8 stars out of five. Not quite a four, but not quite a three and a half. It was, it was an entertaining read. Next up, I read Get a Life, Chloe Brown. I know it's, it's, it's a romance book. Um, I don't read romance, but it was part of this experiment and I went along with it. So this is a romance book about, um, a woman who is reluctant to be in a romantic relationship, basically. And I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. I would give it a three out of five stars. Um, I don't have a whole lot to say about it because I already talked about it. Um, but, you know, if you're into romance books, don't take my word for it. I know a lot of people really like that book, so it's just not my thing. Next, I read my first Karen Slaughter book called Pretty Girls. I had been wanting to read this author for quite some time and I just picked one at random. This is about two sisters who have been estranged for a long time and one of them, her husband passes away and after he passes, she finds that he's not the person that she thought he was. Like he had a pretty dark, um, like double life going on and she reconnects with her sister and together they are trying to, um, Put together the pieces of what happened this one is pretty raw it gets pretty dark and there is quite a bit of violence in it um, but i did really like it i gave it four out of five stars all right so that wrapped up all those books that i read for my scorpio reads and then i was trying to throw in some slasher reads for uh kelsey over at slime and slasher she was having like a it was just a June slasher readathon. I'm sorry, I forget the actual name for it. But um, so I read Camp Slaughter, which is a book that uh, I think by Sergio Gomez that I've had on my mental TBR for quite some time. This is a book about a group of teenagers who are going into like the secluded woods. They have a cabin there where they're going to party or whatever. 
whatever those kids do. And uh, there is rumor that there has been like a cannibal that lives in the woods. And it's just been like this folk tale for a long time. So they get there and turns out maybe this isn't a folk tale. Um, I don't have a lot to say about this book because I did not love this book. I'm sorry. I know a lot of people do. Um, my problem with it was I really hated the way that the villain was portrayed, uh, which I know sounds stupid because it is the villain, but they, I think they were trying to say that he had like a low IQ. I don't know the way that they, that it was just like, this character was discussed just left a bad taste in my mouth and I just kind of felt wrong um, reading about it. I think part of the problem for this is that we get the point of view of the killer like the point of view um, goes around between all these characters and you will not care about any of the other characters like you they're kind of almost interchangeable but then you get the point of the view of the killer and I feel like this really did this book a disservice um getting to hear his thoughts i i think it would have been better if it had if we had focused a little bit more on some of the other characters actually cared about them or like this character this villain was a mystery i'm not sure but it just left a bad taste in my mouth and i didn't like it i think i gave us two out of five stars i'm sorry but um yeah, didn't care for that one. But next is a book I did care for, and that was Curse of the Reaper. I listened to this as an audiobook because Amy had picked, Amy from Amy Noel Reads picked this out as her Dark Heart Club book of the month. Book pick, book club, can I talk? I don't know. So I have to thank her for picking that because I'm not sure that I ha would have ever heard of this book otherwise, and I really enjoyed this. I do have a difficult time with uh, audiobooks at times where it take it's hard for me to get into the characters or to care about what I'm listening, but this one sucked me in right away. I cared about the characters. This is about two actors, and one of them is an older actor who who played the main villain in like a, a series of slasher flicks like back in the 80s. So think Freddy Krueger or Jason or whatever. Um, so he played that character. The character was called the Reaper. And this, this guy was more of like a trained actor. And so he took this, this role really seriously. And he put a lot of thought and heart and love into this character. Um, he actually ends up giving his whole life to this character and this film franchise even though he had planned on going on to do bigger and better things. So he is getting older and he's actually at the early stages of having Alzheimer's and doing like these horror conventions where he's signing things and no one seems to care about this character anymore. But then they find out that they're going to try to reboot this series and they're looking for a new person to play the Reaper. And this kind of sparks something alive in his brain where he thinks he that he should be the Reaper. Um, he's the one that created this character and he wants to try out for this part. Meanwhile, we have the, the perspective of a younger actor who has a substance abuse problem. He's really struggling with drug addiction and um, he thinks that this will be his way of getting back into acting and like putting his life on the straight and narrow he's going to try out for this part as well well our older actor starts um hearing the voice of the reaper in his head and starts having like memory lapses and realizes that this reaper is slowly taking over his body and he's not sure if this is actually happening or is this part of his sickness of the alzheimer's that's taking place and he just he's losing it <laughs> One of the things I absolutely loved about this book was a lot of times at the beginning of chapters, they would have a little bit of a, they would put a part of these old slasher movies, uh, like a scene at the beginning of the chapter and you got to see what these movies were like. And it's easy to forget that these movies did not actually exist because they came up with some great scenes, um, some great one-liners, some great kills, some cheesy, just it sounded it 
this author made it sound like this move these movies actually existed and I want to watch them I still want to watch them so it would be cool if they made them <laughs> so overall this book was a super fun time um, I gave it four out of five stars and I hope to see more from this author in the future next up is a book that I posted an entire book review too because it's a chonky boy and this is Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. This is like an epic high fantasy story about three characters who are all going on separate missions. I don't want to get too much into it because I, I will link down below my video review of this where I go into great detail but I ended up giving this like a 4.25 out of 5 stars. Um, I really really liked it. It, it leans a little bit more dark fantasy and it made me think of God of War, the video games a lot. And I know a lot of people compare it to Game of Thrones. So if you are into those kinds of things, you may be into this book. So go ahead and check that out. Uh, check out that video where I go more in depth about this. All right, next up, I read Cruel Summer by Wesley South Southard. This is an amazing freaking cover, except you could barely read the title. But look at that. I really appreciated this cover because when they go into describing certain things, I just kept looking back at this cover and yeah. This is a book about a mother and her son and the mother's boyfriend are going on like a little uh, weekend getaway to um, like a beach area in Florida where she had spent many summers when she was younger and she's hoping that this will be a fun family vacation. However, her boyfriend is a real piece of shit. <laughs> like, he's seriously the worst. He is physically and verbally abusive. He is just so over the top, horrible, that he kind of seems like a caricature. But he is a piece of crap. So they go on a fishing boat and he ends up, something happens and he ends up going overboard into shark infested waters. So he's gone and the mother and son think, oh, our problems are solved. Uh, this guy's out of our lives. We can start a new life. Well, yeah, that doesn't happen. Um, the, he ends up being taken over by some kind of like water god that uh, takes over his body and uses his hatred to like come back to life. And he can control like not only all of the ocean, but all of the creatures that live within the ocean. So you would think, okay, well, just stay out of the water and you'd be fine, but that's not the case. Let's talk about the good. The good in this book, I really liked the horror scenes. The horror scenes were quite excellent. They were very effective. They were um, ideas that I hadn't seen before, using the ocean and using all of the creatures within it to really create this feeling of terror and like that you can't escape. And I think that the author did a really good job with this. What I didn't care for were the characters, like at all. The only likable character is the son in this book. Everybody else, like the mom is just as bad. She just makes horrible decisions and the, the son has to live with it. And even, I just couldn't even feel sorry for her. I couldn't empathize with her at all because she continued to make horrible decisions as the story goes on. I felt like none of the characters did things that made sense at all. Like nobody would act the way that they acted. The police wouldn't act. Um, just nobody, their actions did not make sense to me. Like towards the end, I kind of just wanted the bad guy to win and um, take these guys out, except for <laughs> maybe the son. Um, I just could not care about the characters. But the horror scenes were done quite well and that made me give this book a 3 out of 5. For the horror scenes it's probably worth reading but I really just did not care for the characters at all. I forget to um, say that I read this because Coral over at Pretty in Paper Cuts had this as her June pick for the summer and I'm interested to see what she thought of it or if any of you had read this along with her uh, what did you think of this? It I'm just wondering if uh, you hated these characters as much as I did. And last but not least, I read Wasps in the Ice Cream. I got this from Nat Galley as an audiobook. And based on the cover and the font and the even the title, I thought this was going to be a straight up horror book. 
but it wasn't. It turned out to be a coming of age story, which I like coming of age stories. I suppose that it does have some supernatural elements in it, some paranormal elements in it. So they probably don't really know how else to market this other than a horror book, but it is at its core a coming of age story about a uh, teenage boy in high school who is hanging out with his friends and they do something kind of mean to these three sisters that lived in this house that everyone thinks is like not a haunted house but this is a family that's just shunned from the rest of this small town and nobody talks to them they're the pharaoh sisters and you're not supposed to talk to them they don't talk to anybody they don't interact they don't go to school they don't interact with the community or the town at all they're just there they're like these social pariahs so they do something mean and our main character feels guilty about this so he goes to their house to apologize and ends up eventually becoming developing like this friendship with one of the sisters named georgia now if you've ever been to school in public school you've probably at some point had like a friendship with someone that was unpopular or that people maybe someone else in one of your other friend groups is like why are you friends with that person and so he decides to keep this a secret um he starts hanging out more and more with this girl but they're never seen in public together and he never talks about it he always kind of just takes off on his friends and goes to hang out with this girl because he knows that it would be like social suicide to uh, let anyone know that she, he hangs out with her. So I don't know if you've ever had that situation where you have this friend that you almost feel ashamed to be friends with. And this really explores that side of it. Just the delicate balance that being this age is. And how fickle your friends can be um, with your other friend choices. Just also how your friends would react if they find out that you don't consider them like the most important friend and I feel like um as a female we go through this a lot if you've ever seen Mean Girls that really encapsulates that uh that feeling very well but this is more from like even a male friend group point of view which I found interesting because I always feel like uh, males are a little bit more understanding and are able to just like kind of shake things off and get over it a little bit more but in this case that that's not what happens and we are really just exploring uh the feelings of friendship loneliness of loss and grief because our main character has also um, lost his mother before the story started and he's dealing with um his dad's new girlfriend and this all takes place over a summer and he works in an ice cream hut and that's where the title of this book comes from so Sorry, I feel like I'm rambling, but there's a lot kind of covered in this book and I don't want to go too much into detail. It's just, if you like coming of age stories, I think you should read this one. So it's going to be hard for me to pick a favorite book of the month. I would say my top three are Wasps and the Ice Cream, Shadow of the Gods, and Curse of the Reaper. In terms of just pure enjoyment and having fun, absolutely Curse of the Reaper is my favorite pick. Um, for more meaningful uh, read, Wasps and the Ice Cream. And then just for the start of a new series that I think is going to be quite good um, is Shadow of the Gods. I like them all in their own way. So I don't know how I'm going to pick my favorite for the month. So that is everything I read in June. Have you read any of these books? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. What is your favorite book that you read in June? Thank you so much for watching me ramble on about books, and I hope you're having a great summer. Stay spooky!